Are you ready to do muscles that move the pectoral girdle and the arm? What's the difference? Muscles that move the pectoral girdle are actually moving the scapula. And we already had some conversation about scapular movements and what happens to the arm when the scapula moves because it, the scapula is kind of attached to your arm. So when it moves, your arm also moves, if you know what I'm talking about. All right, let's get started on our muscles. First of all, we're going to start out with the muscles that are moving our pectoral girdle, which means they're attached to the scapula. They're not attached to the arm necessarily. And the first one is pectoralis minor. And you might think, dude, really, pectoralis minor? That is, that's like my pec muscles here. Pectoralis minor is a, what's the word, inferior? No, deep muscle. It's deep to pec major. And just because um, we're going to do it anyway here in a second, but this is pec major. This is the one that makes your lovely little buff chest muscle thing. And if we peel pec major off, then deep to that is pec minor. And you can see pec minor right here. It attaches to the coracoid process of the scapula. It also attaches to ribs three, four, and five. When pec minor contracts, can you, can you see how it's actually going to kind of depress the scapula and probably um, bring, like, almost kind of hunchiness to your um, pectoral girdle. So look, the words that your book uses, that it protracts, okay, that works for me. Your scapula is protracting, which is like bringing your whole system forward. It's protracting and depressing. And again, I mean, if all you have to do is look at the fibers and, and you can probably figure that out. So um, I, like I said, I don't know if I would be memorizing actions here. Um, we also have serratus anterior, which you can actually see on this side, but you can see it here as well. Serratus anterior creates that really nice, like, little, the little bumpies that you see over in the ribs side, near the ribs. You might think they are ribs, but they actually are a, a muscle. Fascinating. So they, they're, it's, it's serrated like a serrated knife. And it attaches to ribs one through eight. That's a lot of rib attachments. But on the posterior side, why are we studying it with the pectoral girdle? This is crazy talk. Serratus anterior, in fact, this is probably it right here. It attaches, what, to the medial border of the scapula. Are you serious? That, and it's huge. You look at it from the front side and you're like, oh, that's a cute little serrated knife muscle. And then you go look at it on the back side and you're like, whoa, that thing's huge. How's that possible? And does it really wrap all the way around and attach to the medial side of the scapula? And it totally does. That's crazy talk. Um, actions for that guy? All right then. Trapezius. Trapezius we're going to see on the back side. This is trapezius. Myra's trapezius is um, interesting. Now, seriously, look at this thing. It attaches to the spines of your vertebrae, like, all the way up. It, it's a superficial muscle all up your neck. It is attached to the spine scapula, the spine of the scapula as well. You can see that right here. And then <clears throat> if you think about how it moves the scapula, I mean, really, let's, let's start squinting our eyes right now. These fibers, the upper fibers, what's going to happen if they contract? You're going to elevate your scapula. What's going to happen if these guys contract? You're going to retract your scapula. You might even think of it as, as adducting your scapula. What about these guys? What if they contract? You're actually going to depress your scapula. 
Trapezius and several of these really big, obvious muscles have many, many, many possible actions. Your key is not necessarily to memorize the actions, but it is to be able to look at the fiber direction and think, is that action possible here? And if it is, then um, that is a possible action there. All right, my favorite, maybe my very favorite of all time muscle, maybe. This is kind of weird. Why are these my favorites? The rhomboids. The rhomboids attach to the medial line of the scapula, and they attach to the spines of vertebrae C7 through T8. C7 through T5, I was really close. It's actually two muscles, rhomboid minor and rhomboid major were cool. One is awesome. You can call that your rhomboids. And then look at what's going to happen if those fibers shorten. If they shorten, they are going to actually elevate your scapula slightly, and they're going to adduct the scapula or um, retract the scapula. And those are all fine ways to say it. All right, those are the ones that are specifically moving our scapula that we need to know. But we also have a whole bunch of muscles that are going to still attach to the scapula, but they're going to specifically move our arm. So we're going to have attachments um, to the humerus. And our first one is pec major. Check out pec major. We actually have an attachment in here. Pec major attaches to the inner tubercular groove. What else goes through the inner tubercular groove? Remember our, our tendon of the long head of the biceps traveled through that inner tubercular groove to hold the shoulder joint more stable? Well, pec major actually attaches to that inner tubercular groove. That's one of its attachments on the humerus. The other, what? Really? Do you want to memorize this or do you just want to talk about it? It attaches to the sternum. It attaches to the clavicle. It attaches to some ribs. You can point to it and you can tell me. Now, again, we're going to have some complications when it comes to um, movement because look at all of these different fiber directions. And, you know, look at the fiber direction and then say, do you think that this particular movement is possible here? Latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi is here. It's the, the second giant muscle on the back side of a human. Trapezius is superior, and latissimus dorsi is inferior. And let's look. I love this. Pec major and latissimus dorsi attach to the same place of the inner tubercular groove. And then um, latissimus, really? It attaches, uh, it disappears here, but it goes all the way down. Latissimus actually attaches way down at this, this uh, like band of connective tissue in your lumbar region. And it's attaching to spines of vertebrae all the way, I want to know what it is, it's like T8 all the way down to your sacrum practically. So. Um, it's, a, it's giant, and it spans a long direction. And again, look at all these different fiber directions that we're going to have. That's going to affect the kind of movements that are possible there. The primary movement of latissimus dorsi, and this, this kills me. It attaches up at the inner tubercular groove, and when that muscle contracts, it causes ready. You say it first. What is that action? When latissimus contracts, what is that action? That is extension of the humerus. What? And that's true. So extension, your latissimus dorsi is your biggest humerus extender. Wow. Think about doing lat pulls. If you have ever worked out and done lat pulls, then you know that it's your latissimus dorsi that is extending your humerus in anatomy land. And if that hurts your brain at all, stop right now and go figure out, remind yourself why this is flexing my humerus and this is extending my humerus.
when we talk about anatomical movement. Deltoid, another muscle that is super easy to identify. Here it is. It's, it's the one that forms the contour of your shoulder. It attaches, our distal attachment is fantastically easy because it attaches to the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. And then again, oh, holy hell, who, where does it attach and to whom? There's a whole range of things that it attaches to. It attaches all over the scapula. Look at there, it's attaching to the scapula and look at all those different fiber directions. And so it gets messy on that proximal attachment. That's cool. You can look at it and you can identify it and then you can figure out the kinds of actions. What would you imagine is its major action? Abduction of the humerus. Okay, one more muscle and then we get our four um, rotator cuff muscles. So the last uh, arm mover that is not I just said it. Oh, come on. I'm not, I'm not going to lick. It's not a rotator cuff muscle, for crying out loud, is teres major. And look at this. Here is teres major. It's this muscle right here. It attaches, I like to think of it attaching to the inferior angle of the scapula on the medial side. And then it comes around and it actually attaches to our humerus it attaches to the lesser tubercle of the humerus. I told you that all of our rotator cuffs are going to also attach in that area. So teres major is the most inferior of the next three, but it is not a rotator cuff muscle. Hmm. Maybe it just isn't, like maybe this attachment here is just a little too floppy to really truly stabilize that, that joint. So the rest of them that we're going to look at are rotator cuff muscles. And I feel like I have a picture that might help you visualize teres major. Mm, maybe not so much. Maybe this is good enough for us. But then there's something there. I knew I had something that I wanted to show you. Ignore the mandible over here. Mwah, mwah. This is teres major. If you notice, it's, it's really deep. Now, all of my um, rotator cuff muscles are actually visible here. I think all of them are. But this most inferior one is teres major. Okay. Thinking about the movement of teres major, you have to think about, okay, this is, this is interesting because this is teres major and I'm going to put a green dot on teres minor. That's teres minor. I'm not sure why the minors are on top of the majors, but that's cool. So teres major wraps around and attaches to the lesser tubercle on the anterior side. Teres minor stays on the posterior side where it attaches to the greater tubercle. So their, mo their actions, they actually like come around and cup the, the humerus from opposite sides. And so you can imagine that as they contract, they're going to move the humerus differently. Teres major actually is partially responsible for extending the humerus. That makes sense to me. As I shorten this, my humerus is going to come back down. It's going to extend. Adduct, it's going to pull in. That makes sense when I look at this muscle right here. And then it also is going to cause medial rotation. Now, does that work for you? Because I can visualize that because teres major is attaching to the anterior side of the lesser tubercle, right? Yes. And so when it contracts, it's going to pull, it's going to rotate that whole thing forward. Can you see why um, getting in and working with your cadavers is going to be really handy with muscles? Because you're actually going to be able to go in and grab things and move them around and see where they're attached and visualize the movements that are happening. All right, let's look at our other, our, our rotator cuff muscles. And this is nice because I actually have a view of them all right here. This is a view, this, I'm looking at the posterior side of this human right here. And you notice a muscle that is um, basically attached to the sub supraspinous fossa of the scapula. 
and that is supraspinatus. Supraspinatus comes around and attaches through here to the greater tubercle of the humerus and gets a grip on there and helps stabilize the shoulder joint. That's supraspinatus above the spine of the scapula. This fine fellow right here is infraspinatus. Infraspinatus is below the spine of the scapula. And it, look at where it's smeared on to this infraspinous fossa on the scapula. And again, it comes over and the um, infraspinatus also attaches to the greater tubercle. So supraspinatus and infraspinatus are attaching to the greater tubercle. Somebody else attaches to the greater tubercle. And that is our friend teres minor. Here's teres minor. Teres minor is attaching down um, on the edge of the scapula, uh, very inferior, and also attaching to the greater tubercle. So far, so good. Now look at this subscapularis. This guy, now we've changed our view. Here we're looking at the back side of our human. Here we're looking at the front side of the human. Does this hurt your head? Because actually we've like taken out all the ribs and all the, all the stuff and we're just looking at the scapula from the anterior aspect. So really if you want to go around and like palpate deep from the back side, from the posterior side, we, we can't even see this. We can't even see this part of the scapula unless you look through the ribs or like pull off somebody's arm and then you can get up underneath there and look. So this guy is subscapularis, beneath the scapula, like, but beneath the scapula and between the ribs. Does that make sense? Take some time to make sure that you're cool with that. With, with the difference of where subscapularis is. Subscapularis is, is, is smeared on the whole subscapular fossa of the scapula, and it also is attached to the lesser tubercle. So here it is. You can see it attached to the lesser tubercle. Everybody else is attached to the greater tubercle. Subscapularis is attached to the lesser tubercle. And that's going to affect the movements that subscapularis is responsible for as well, which basically is medial rotation. Because remember, this is looking in from the anterior aspect of the shoulder and the scapula. Probably worth taking some time to um, fiddle with that and visualize that. We can look at that on Myra on her shoulder, and, and hopefully we'll be able to look and see what we can find out on Frank as well. Is that it? Do full view. The only nerve that I wanted to make mention of is the deltoid, and that's innervated by the axillary nerve. The rest of them are various flavors of spinal nerves, which we will not actually um, commit to memory. All right, let's do the forearm. 